Damn, this is some bad lighting. Fuck you, Thunderstorm! All right, y'all, I apologize for the bad lighting. This is storming outside. This is my lighting for right now, so I don't have any studio lights yet. I'm not quite there yet, but I will be soon. Just give me just give me a chance. So I'm going to jump right into it. This is my spoiler review for War for the Planet of the Apes. And the reason why it took so long to do, I just wanted it to kind of die down a little bit. You know, everybody was talking about it. Everybody had their views on it. And I wanted to really think about it, let it marinate for a little bit, hear what other uh, YouTube critics had to say about it. And a lot of critics gave it a lot of love, you know, so that's what's up. So now I'm going to get into the spoilers and go into depth with what I really liked about this film. So War for the Planet of the Apes, like Dawn, went in a totally different direction than I thought it was going to go. Because the name is called War... Like I said in my other review, I thought it had to do with war. I thought the whole movie was basically going to be like a battle. But instead, we get a gladiator-esque battle in the beginning, like in the beginning of 2000's Gladiator. And then after that, it becomes a revenge tale. And I'm like, okay, they're, they're going in a different direction with this. And it worked out perfectly. It worked out perfectly because I like when a movie can't surprise me. And this movie did surprise me in the direction that it went in. So... As you know, Caesar lost his family, uh, his son and his wife get killed by uh, the colonel, and he's set out now to go kill the colonel, and really doesn't think about the rest of the apes that he's leading, it's all about, I have to avenge my family. Even though uh, Maurice kind of tells him, like, hey, well, what about, you know, you're, you're in charge, you know, you're responsible for the other apes, like, what's up? Caesar's like, hey, you handle that, man, I gotta go handle this shit. And it cost him. You know, and that's what another thing I liked about this was it shows Caesar's vulnerability. It shows that he's a leader, but he's not perfect. And he's not this almighty, just powerful character. Like he's, well, I was going to say human, but no, he's an ape. But he he has flaws. He has things about him that, that aren't right. And when stuff happens, you know what I'm saying, he acknowledges that. So he goes off on this mission, and they come to find out that he, um, well, the apes get, the apes get captured enslaved almost like a like some holocaust type shit and then caesar's uh, ends up getting enslaved with them and when he looks around like when you notice like they all kind of turn their backs on him and he's looking like damn like what have i done you know and you see for the first time like you know damn like he let his his vengeance his vengeance and his rage get in the way of what the big picture was and that was to take care of his people so with his family getting killed it was very abrupt, you know what I mean, like, it happened really fast, it came out of nowhere, like, his son was a big part of Dawn of the Apes, and then, in this one, he gets killed off very, very quickly, but, you know, we needed something to, to get Caesar to, to go after this guy, so, it did work out, uh, oh, and, um, I forgot to mention in my spoiler-free review, uh, Bad Ape, Bad Ape was the comic relief, and like a lot of other YouTube critics said, uh, it could have went either way. It could have went to the, you know, the Jar Jar Binks route, and it didn't. You know, I thought it worked. Everybody in the crowd was laughing. He didn't really go over the top, which he could have, but it worked out perfectly. I laughed a lot. I did enjoy the bad ape character. And in a movie that is so gloomy and serious, he his comic relief was perfect. And then you have uh, the, the gorilla uh, donkey who is like a house negro from the slavery days. That's the first thing I thought of. I was like, okay, this is almost like the Samuel L. Jackson character in Django Unchained. So he was part of Caesar's crew. He ended up becoming a sellout, working for the colonel in the army, and is responsible for a lot of apes dying. And then he goes, you know, full Darth Vader at the end, where he was looking at Luke like, oh, shit, like, okay, I'm coming back to the light side now. I got to do something about this. So he had a Darth Vader redemption moment. I really dug that. I knew it was going to happen eventually. I knew he wasn't going to stay bad forever. So I, I did like that. So let, let's let's get to what uh, what we really need to uh, talk about now is uh, Caesar's death. Man, was I in the theater bawling. Like, I hate when I get like that. This is the second movie this year that's got me like that. Logan was first, and now this one got me because we've grown from we've grown with Caesar since Rise of the Apes and Dawn of the Apes, and we've seen him evolve and go through stuff and everything, and now 
it comes full circle and he dies and it's not in a dramatic cinematic way he just he he rescues his his apes okay he gets them to the promised land and now it's like he's at peace because not only did he avenge his family but now he's provided a future for his his other son and the rest of the apes so now he can die peacefully so it was necessary for caesar to go but you just hate to see him go because caesar is one of the the greatest one of the one of the greatest cinematic characters of all time and it's a cg character and man andy circus i'm i'm on board man i will sign a petition to nominate andy circus for best actor for motion capture because wow this dude's body of work is amazing he killed it once again as caesar i think this deserves some kind of oscar something okay if he doesn't win best actor give him something for for doing caesar this one i think he was the most conflicted and there were times where he was visualizing Cobra, and even Maurice was like, okay, that's some shit Cobra would say, or, you know, in, in a lot of ways, Caesar was starting to become Cobra, and that's when he really had to check himself and like, no, nah, you know, this is not the way to go, and he redeemed himself, and it took, it took a little girl, the little girl Nova, which, by the way, I didn't realize that she was a character from the original Planet of the Apes, which I've never seen, so that's probably why I didn't know. But, yeah, it, it took this little girl to really bring him back and say, hey, this isn't you. This is not how we do things, you know. So I thought this was a perfect way to end the trilogy, man. I really love this shit. And I will say that in, in this order, I'm going to say Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is number one, then War, and then Rise. But all three films are equally epic, okay? There's no weak link, okay? If you compare this to other trilogies, you have the Dark Knight trilogy, you have the Indiana Jones trilogy. Yes, Indiana Jones trilogy, there's only three. Um, Star Wars trilogy, the Godfather trilogy, Back to the Future, The Matrix. Okay, if you name, name all these trilogies I've just named, there's always a weak link of them. Okay, Dark Knight trilogy, Dark Knight Rises, which was very promising up until they made Bane a little bitch. Okay, so that took away some of the epicness out of that. Matrix... Yeah, I don't need to even say anymore, man. Back to the Future, one was great, two was mediocre, three, I don't even think I finished three. Indiana Jones, I love Raiders, Temple of Doom was my favorite, Last Crusade was, eh. So, you see where I'm going with this? Godfather, Godfather 1 and 2, both epic. Three, what the fuck? So, yeah, this is one of the rare trilogies where each movie was solid, and I'll say that... The Star Wars prequels should have took note of this. Well, they came out before this, so I guess it couldn't. But this trilogy did what the Star Wars prequels should have done. Because Caesar's journey from an infant till his death was done so perfectly and masterfully. You really cared about his character and you grew with him. And that's what that's what Lucas should have did with Anakin's story. Anakin's story I felt was just so under underutilized. It was just it was a waste. Then you had a bad performance on top of that. So you had such an iconic character like Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, and it just it it wasn't it, it didn't work. So yeah, man, uh, I gave this movie an A plus, and I'm sticking with it. To me, it is the second best of the series because Dawn of the Apes was just to me. I just thought it was better because I, I just loved the whole conflict between Koba and Caesar and how Koba was pretty much like the ape version of Bishop from Juice, okay? Start out cool, start out being, you know, Caesar's brother, and then after that, shit hits the fan, and then they have to go against each other. I, and I just, I just love that story element a little bit more than I love War. Yeah, War of the Apes is the best movie of the year so far. Um, I don't see if anybody's going to top that. Maybe The Dark Tower possibly what did you guys think comment below uh comment freely don't forget to subscribe this is rashad g signing out see you in the next video